Major controversy this week in New York City with Cardinal Dolan. A funeral was held for Cecilia Ginelli, who is a former prostitute. Uh, I'm not, uh, it says transgender. I don't really know Cecilia, if she was born male or female. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to handle that. But the scandal is, is there is a big funeral. And it was rowdy and it was irreverent. And Cecilia herself was, although raised Catholic, was an atheist. So I don't understand why she's having a funeral in a Catholic cathedral. And here, this is actually from the funeral. She has a halo. They're calling her Saint Cecilia. I'm just going to run it. And then I'm going to talk about how Cardinal Dolan has defended the priest, even called him a hero. I mean, I was going to let this story go, but after hearing this, man, we got to we got to do it. So here we go. This is clips from the funeral. Probably not appropriate for little ears. So uh, if you got the little ones with you, want to um, maybe save this for later. Here we go. That no one can say you cannot do it. Esta puta, esta gran puta. We're going to get a translation here from the Spanish in just a little bit, so hold tight. Look at the cathedral, full. The priest even mocked that it's more full than it is on Christmas or Easter. Total blasphemy, total sacrilege. Listen to what happens next. Santa Cecilia. Danos fuerza y coraje para continuar tu legado, hacer frente a los retos, seguir firmes por los que sabemos que merecemos amor y Hold tight, we're going to get the English here. Here it goes. This whore. This great whore. Saint Cecilia. This is in the Catholic Cathedral of St. Patrick's in New York. One of the most iconic Catholic cathedrals representing Catholicism in America. And these shenanigans are going down. Here we go. Ready? This great poor Saint Cecilia, mother of all whores. First off, I just want to say, as a Texan myself, he, this guy's wearing a cowboy hat. You're not supposed to wear cowboy hats in church. St. Paul says men should not cover their heads in church. So this should have been stopped right away. But that's the least of our problems right now. I think you would agree. The priest is right there. Do you see the priest right here? And Cardinal Dolan called him a hero. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Stay tuned. Unbelievable. Complete mockery of the cathedral. Complete mockery of the liturgy. Complete mockery of our faith. Today we say, we see you soon, and that you will give us the strength, the courage to continue your legacy to continue the challenges ahead, to remain steadfast, because we know what we deserve. Love, equity, the same rights, and a life of dignity. All right, so that's one clip. I'm going to share another clip. Hold up. I'm just going to check in with y'all in the live chat right now. Were y'all aware that this is going down? Were you aware? Or is this news to you? Checking in on the live chat. Oh, I like this one right here from Jonathan. Infiltration is real. Facts. Fact check. Green check mark. True. And Cardinal Dolan calls this priest a hero. They've already canonized her. She's an atheist, all right? Do you understand that? She is an atheist. Here's another clip. Boy, 
boy, oh boy. Oh, sorry, gotta gotta hit it. Here we go. Nature is always to forgive and to show mercy. We humbly implore you for your servant Cecilia, whom you have called to journey to you. And since she hoped them Real quick, Cecilia was an atheist. Again, raised Catholic, but I don't know why she's getting a not only a Catholic funeral, but basically a canonization. They're calling her a saint. Believed in you. Grant that she may be led to our true homeland, to the light and its everlasting joys. And may Cecilia's community be loved and received and seen by each other and have access to life-affirming health care and God's protection with secure housing. We pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who was full of love. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay. You know, one of the problems, I've said it before, it's just a good time to say it right now. One of the problems with the prayers of the people, which was introduced after Vatican II, is the prayers of the people are the, is the squishy part of the liturgy where you can put heresy, political activism, garbage. It's, it's where bad ideas go to ferment. And I've heard, I don't go to the Novus Ordo. I go to the traditional Latin Mass or the Byzantine liturgy, but I've heard so many people in the Novus Ordo, every time it gets to the prayers of the people, they just start cringing because they're going to start hearing about basically in America, the platform of the Democratic Party put into prayers, Lord, hear our prayer. And they're just like, I cringe at this moment. And the reason that the traditional Latin Mass and the Eastern liturgies don't have generic prayers of the people that people create is because of that reason. There is a reason that the one holy Catholic and apostolic church said, you know what? Let's write down every word that the priest has to say. That way he doesn't come up with some crazy stuff on his own. So here, once again, the prayers of the faithful are being used for political activism. The prayers of the faithful need to be abolished. On Good Friday, we have prayers, but they're pre-written. None of this people getting up and just saying what they want about life affirming this and housing and on and on and on. Here we go back. Yeah, well, these are the uh, eulogies right now. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, you guys sit down here. But I got to tell you, I mean, did RuPaul show up? In our hearts because we lost our saint. We lost somebody that we could call no matter what, no matter what time. But this lady worked. I mean, credit, I don't know if this is male or female, does have a head covering on during mass. So hard to make sure girls like me, girls like you, boys like you are safe, are grounded, are rooted, got health care. That sex workers are free. So what we're dealing with here is health care, by which they mean surgeries that modify the body, abortion, and then making sure that prostitutes are free. And this is being promoted in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City with the priest standing eight feet away doing nothing. Passive, effeminate, and Cardinal Dolan calls him a hero. This whore. Oh, we've seen this one. I'll play it again. People are coming this in great late. Whore, Saint Cecilia, mother of all whores. There's the priest. He's sitting there. The priest. In his little throne is sitting there. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Cecilia. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. Can someone tell me in the live chat, uh, Sister Janelli, that's who they're talking about here. Sister Janelli, is Sister Janelli was she born male or female? I just want to know. It's curious. Okay. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things. She's canonized. She's canonized. He's saying that we will all go and meet her. 
Unless he's saying everyone's going to go somewhere else and meet her. That's the, that's the gist of it. This is Father Edward Doherty. Father Edward Doherty is in complete, perfect standing with the church. Cardinal Dolan called him a hero. Bishop Strickland has been canceled. Frank Pavone has been canceled. Archbishop Vigano, canceled. This guy right here, he's praised as a hero. Are y'all noticing the pattern yet? Destroys even death itself. Oh, All right. God, whose name there it is. Mamma mia. Look at her. Cecilia, she's, she's canonized. She's got the halo and everything. Um, I did want to share actually this right here. This is about uh, a quote about her being an atheist. Pardon me. Got to got to square it up. This is first off here is Cecilia. Um, she founded the coin clinic, Cecilia's occupational inclusion network, a free health health program for sex workers through a community of health organization in New York. Uh, Gentili acted as the FX television series pose about the underground ballroom dance scene in the eighties and nineties. She also performed two one woman stage shows. There's Cecilia. And then she says, I am an atheist, but I am always asking God for things. Interesting. That's like Jean-Paul Sartre, the French existential philosopher who said, I don't believe in God, but I hate him. That's what Jean-Paul Sartre said. So he knew deep down that God existed and he hated him. She said, I'm an atheist, but I'm always asking God for things. She said on her autobiographical show, Red Ink, touching on topics including her childhood in Argentina and lack of religious faith. And then you'll love this too. You know, if, you, if you're a big fan of AOC, we got her. I rise today to reflect on the life and legacy of beloved Queens community leader, Cecilia Gentili. Cecilia was a beacon of hope for so many communities in my district. She was only 26 when she fled Argentina to seek asylum in the United States. She arrived in New York City in 2003 and lived her truth as a trans woman. She so she lived her truth, and I'm just going to live my truth today. Can I do that? Can I live my truth? The way, the truth, and the life. Unchanging, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can I live that truth? Why was this allowed? Why was it sanctioned? And then LifeSite News reports, I don't know if they broke it or not. Um, this is Micah Hickson, that Cardinal Dolan said that Father Doherty was a hero in how he handled it. Now, I was reflecting on what this means to be a hero. So you basically have a culture that is hypersexualized and contrary to much of Christian morality and faith, all right, based on the ancient belief, pages one, two, and three of Genesis, in the beginning, God created man. Adam and Eve, male and female, he made them. Just basics, right? Basics. So all of this is being trampled upon, made fun of, halos on her, all this. She's an atheist. She says she's an atheist. I don't know why she gets a Catholic funeral. Atheists don't get Catholic funerals. This was a publicity stunt. It was a political action to make the Catholic Church in New York City have to respond to something that they don't want to respond, especially in the wake of fiducia supplicants. And the fact that the priest who sat in his little chair and stood there and said those things did nothing, and then Dolan says he's a hero. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to say, oh, wrong video, this podcast 
is brought to you by infiltration, right? The church has been infiltrated. Let me get this picture right. The church has been infiltrated for decades and decades. There we go. The church has been infiltrated. There are people who do not believe in God, allegedly like Cecilia, do not believe in the Trinity. They do not believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe that he was born of a virgin. Some of these people even say that Mary was not a virgin. They don't believe that he, they may believe he died on the cross. They don't believe he rose on the third day. They don't believe that the Eucharist is transubstantiation. They believe it's a community meal. It's finger food. It's buffet style. It's chill. It's inclusive. It gives us warm fuzzies. But they don't believe that the mass is the once for all eternal oblation sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the logo, second person Trinity, to God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe that. You may say, well, why did they become priests, nuns, bishops, cardinals, or popes? There's a number of reasons. Part of it is just being a young person who's confused. You don't want to disappoint your parents. You can go do good and help the poor and do social justice. So you become a nun or a monk or a priest and you get money. You get three squares a day, even during Lent. You get a place to live. You get a travel expense. You might even get a Lincoln Town Car. But they don't believe. Then there's another group of people. These are just the opportunists. There's another group of people who are the infiltrators. They are there because they hate, and I'm going to use it, they hate, they loathe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Their heart is on track with the demons. Their mind is conformed to the infernal plan for humanity, which is sin, death, destruction, damnation. Jesus says the enemy comes only to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. John chapter 10. These people, you say, well, why don't they just become Episcopalian or, you know, Lutheran or start their own church? Because they want to be within the institution that is in conformity with God, and that's the Catholic Church. It's like Father Charles Murray. He was on, we had a great interview last week, and a priest told him, if the papacy is real and the Pope is truly the successor of Peter and the vicar of Christ, don't you think that Satan would want an office across the hall from him? Would want to infiltrate, worm in, and undermine all the good that God's trying to do? 100%, 100%. So you, you see this, that's infiltration. You see this, that's more infiltration, right? This is pernicious. And I know some people will say, oh, Marshall wrote this book. He just wants to sell some copies. Don't buy it then. Go, get it, go to the library and read it for free. The book was written to reveal how we have been infiltrated since the time of Judas Iscariot. You might even say before the creation of this world, there was an infiltration by Satan and a third of the demons. That was an infiltration. And there's been betrayals and infiltrations all through the Old Testament, and we see it again with Judas Iscariot, but then we see it again with the Gnostics, the Apollinarians, the Arian heretics, the Nestorian heretics, the Monophysite heretics, the Monothelite heretics, the Iconoclasts, the Schismatics, the Luthers, the Calvins, the Zwinglis, the Cramners, the Bootsers, all of them. They have come inside and there is a plot to destroy the church from within. You need to understand our current situation. 
My research, my studies, my belief, my conviction is that it began in the 1830s, our current problem, which is an attack on the family. And I document that infiltration beginning, the current phase that we are fighting a war as Catholics, beginning in 1830, and I lay it out with historical footnotes and research. Get the book, listen to the audible. It's real. Why else would a cardinal, Cardinal Dolan, praise this priest as a hero? Direct quote, hero. I've met Cardinal Dolan. As you know, as some of you know, I used to be an Episcopalian priest before I was a Catholic layman. And after I was a Catholic priest, I'd come into the church. And that first year as a layman, uh, I was doing work at the Catholic Information Center in D.C. I was also working on the pastoral provision, um, which is the way by means, the, the, the way by which married Episcopal priests became married Catholic priests. And I was actually on that track to become a married Catholic priest. And I opted out of it. I've talked about that before. I'll talk about it another time. But I was invited to go to the USCCB meeting in Baltimore. I think it was in Baltimore. Yeah. This would have been in 2006, 2007. I think it was 2006. And I remember being in the lobby one night. And I don't know how it all happened. I was introduced to Cardinal Dolan. Dolan, I think at the time he was Bishop Dolan. I don't think he was Cardinal yet. He may have still not been in New York. And we were having a scotch together. Cardinal Dolan and Taylor Marshall. This really happened. Not making this up. We're there drinking scotch. I think it was Johnny Walker Black. And Cardinal Dolan, then Bishop Dolan, he was a jolly fellow, just like he is today. He had a big hearty laugh. He was a back slapper and he would laugh and throw his head back and he was jovial. And, and I got to admit, as a brand new convert to the Catholic faith, I kind of like this bishop, Bishop Dolan. Anyway, Dolan and I were talking and I kind of gave him my background that I was married. At the time I had four children and I had come into the Catholic church and I'd been accepted for the pastoral provision and I was a candidate for holy orders, and I was planning on pursuing uh, becoming a Catholic priest all through the pastoral provision. He very much liked that, nodded, oh, that's good, I like that. And he said, well, I'm always looking for priests, so if you want to transfer out to, and I can't remember, what, what diocese was he? Green Bay? Something like that. I'd ordain you. And I'll, you know, we just laugh. And anyway, that's my one-time meeting with Dolan a long time ago. And uh, through the years, I've watched him, and he still is that kind of belly laughter, slap you on the back, kind of, kind of lovable teddy bear, teddy bear kind of guy. But when I see this, and I see how he engages with the parades and the Met Gala, and how certain priests are undermined persecuted, traditional Latin mass, etc. Let me just say, concerned, concerned, disappointed. Boy, am I glad that I did not become a married Catholic priest. If you agree with me, go ahead and hit that like button. I can't imagine being Taylor Marshall in 2024 with a Roman collar around my neck, taking my assignments and being obedient to any bishop in the United States Conference of Bishops, be it Dolan or whomever. Actually, if you've heard this story before, I was actually, I'd actually met Cardinal McCarrick and was on track, on the ordination track in DC at that time. McCarrick was on his way out. I think he might have already been out by that time. But man, what a wild life that would have been if there had been Father Marshall working for all these, all these bishops. Wild. I'm going to go to comments and questions. I want to hear what you guys think about... Let me go back to it. This. 
right? This. Wild. But I gotta tell you, there's something that's hurting deep in our hearts. Okay. We lost our saint. We lost somebody that. All right. Leave of our joyfully poor. This great poor. Okay, so let's Q&A it up. A little bit here. Hit those questions. Want to hear from y'all. You guys agree with this? Um, what should Catholics in New York do? Here's Matt Schneider. He says, doesn't Ignatius say to submit to your bishop? Hmm. Do you think St. Ignatius of Antioch, who was martyred in the year 103, 108 of our Lord, do you think he would approve of this? And so, yeah, just, just submit to this. What if your bishop is Nestorius? He was the bishop of Constantinople, and, and Bishop Nestorius told his clergy and his lay people to stop saying Theotokos, Mother of God, God bearer, and only say Christotokos, Christ bearer, Mother of Christ. He commanded them to do that, Matt Schneider. Should they have obeyed the heretic Archbishop of Constantinople, Nestorius, or should they have disobeyed him? That's really the question right now. If your superior asks you to do something that's wrong, do you do it? You know, I was just taking orders. I was just obeying. Doesn't really hold up when you're doing moral theology. My Nazi, my Nazi officer told me to do such and such, so I did it. I'm not guilty. That doesn't really hold up. Obedience has limits, and obedience is always, always based on on truth. Why? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So Matt, I'm glad you asked that question. It's an important one. And we dealt with it. Amy says, rosary reparation on the steps outside St. Patrick's, bring holy water. Amen. I love that. Juliana says, this whole thing was demonic. Um, Emmy says, I miss Mother Angelica. Ironically, Dolan was on her famous episode where she went after the liberals who were at World Youth Day in the f female mime depicting Jesus. He does the introduction. It's on YouTube if you search it. Epic. Good research, Emmy. Love that. What else are y'all saying here? Katie says, no, you can't be obedient to your superior if it goes against everything that Jesus taught. It goes against truth. Katie is exactly correct. Here's Renee X. I always, I always love to see Renee X in the comments. I like to feature her. She has good points. Cardinal Dolan has granted his blessings on a number of such and such friendly churches throughout the city. This is no secret. No secret. Lisa says, please ask Father Ripperger to exercise the cathedral. What's interesting is, just a week or two before this happened, Father Ripperger was at St. Patrick's and he preached at St. Patrick's. I don't believe he said mass, but he did preach. And there's a great picture of him from that same pulpit preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Catholic faith. So maybe when Father Ripperger was there preaching, the demon said, you know what? We're going to have to, we're going to have to do a little of this after Father Ripperger was here. Who knows? The infiltration waited for Mother Angelica to pass away before they infiltrated EWTN. Maybe. I don't think so. I think infiltrators are all infiltrators always be infiltrating. Put that on a coffee mug. Yellow Roses says, I feel very discouraged sometimes. I know we should have hope, but it's very hard. Okay, I'm going to give you your hope, Yellow Roses. Cardinal Dolan ain't in charge. This priest ain't in charge. These people are not in charge. Jesus Christ is in charge. He's the king. He's the Lord. He's the ruler. He's the emperor. He has a plan. He has a way to correct this. He's asking us to do his will on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to pray that prayer at the end of the show. These 
are just vain attempts to undermine the truth, the beauty, and the goodness of Jesus Christ and Christ crucified. Do not be discouraged. This is passing. This is a mockery. Jesus is forever. 28 Bull says, not another dollar. Yeah, you can't be giving money to this, my people. Cannot subsidize this. Cannot. Helena says, yes, I saw his lecture online at St. Patrick's. I hope Dolan was paying attention. Maybe he will learn something. I think Helena is referring to Father Ripperger here. Yeah, we need Father Ripperger back at St. Patrick's, do some exorcisms. It's getting wild in New York. Cuddly Bunny says, this was a response by Satan to Father Ripperger speaking there. You know what? I agree with you. I agree with you. It just seems to make sense. Martha says, I'm so thankful for my parish priest. He's incredibly traditional and faithful. Thank God. Thank God. I also have a wonderful priest. Very traditional, very orthodox. Mountain Man says, we hear more about the state of the church and the scandals because of social media. That is true. That is true. People uh, in 1200 did not wake up, look at a device in their home and see what was going on at the Vatican. That's true. However, I don't think anything close to what you just saw on the clips that I showed has ever happened in the Catholic Church with the sanction of the clergy. I mean, there's been bad stuff that has happened in Catholic Church, but the priests inviting, enduring, allowing these kind of things, you know, did that ever happen in, in the last 2,000 years? Priest says, come on, all y'all, and do this? And say things like Saint Cecilia, the Punta, the Punta, the mother of all prostitutes. And I mean, that's pretty wild, man. Mountain man. I like that name, Mountain Man. Sounds cool. Shan, uh, Shannon says, love our traditional priests, the pillars holding up the teachings while taking fire from the superiors. I mean, that's, you know, Shannon, for me, I look at how these traditional Catholic parishes, you know, there's, they're not allowed to buy new property. They're not allowed to grow. They're not allowed to add new masses. You know, there's the two traditional Latin masses in Austin, Texas, next, gone, by, somehow not in conformity with the community and ecclesiology of the local diocese. And yet we got this going on in New York City. And it's like, that priest is a hero. That priest is a hero. He was bold and he was courageous. Did you see how heroic he was? I mean, let's talk about hero. Batman, kind of a hero, right? Vigilante, takes care of people getting beat up and mugged and stolen from. Do you remember Batman? He's like up against Joker and he just kind of hangs his head and leaves. And then people are like, man, Batman, he's such a hero. No, that's not what a hero does, right? And I just sort of, hey, Batman, here comes Joker. He's going to ruin Gotham and he's going to hurt people. And he's got, he's going to have radioactive sludge run through the streets. And then Batman's kind of like, I don't know, guys. Got to tolerate these. Got to tolerate Joker. Got to. I'm doing Batman voice. I don't know, guys. We have to tolerate Joker. He needs love and affirmation. Do nothing. Stand by. Yeah, but Joker's going to fill the city with radioactive sludge, Batman. We must affirm the Joker. Do not oppose him. That's not heroic. Why would Cardinal Dolan say that this priest was a hero when he's basically, you know, you expect the hero to be like Batman, like, come on, Robin. Let us go fight the Joker. Let us save the innocent. In the Batmobile, go. 
That's that's what you do when you're a hero. Not everyone stand down. The Joker's feelings are hurt and he needs affirmation. He needs a pastoral approach. Let them make a mockery of the bat cave. No. Forget that. All right, let's say, let's do an Our Father for all this. We're going to pray it in Latin. And uh, let's pray for all these people. You know, Jesus has the power, the graces, the sacraments, the redemption, the blood spilt to redeem every mortal sin, the nastiest mortal sin, the nastiest mortal sin that New York City can conjure up. Jesus Christ has already defeated it on the cross. So these people are not hopeless. These people are not 100% lost. These people are not yet in perdition, just like we aren't. There is hope for them to be saved. So let's pray for them. We'll pray thee, our Father. Oremus, nomini patris et fidi et spiritus sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui est in celi, sanctificeter nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, secut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Lord, we pray for all those involved, clergy, lay people, anyone who's confused, anyone who's trying to mock us. We ask that your grace, your actual grace, will affect them and change them, and that they will accept your gospel and receive sanctifying grace and become truly saints. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, the Redeemer. Amen. Nomine Patris et Vidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thanks for watching, everyone. Just want to say, if you need to move out of New York City and move down here to Texas, another conservative place, Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, you want to get out of California or New York, go to real estate. Oh my goodness, the the uh, the video is wrong again. Go to real estate for life. There it is, realestateforlife.org. They are people who hold your beliefs, hold your values. And people ask me all the time, hey, I need to move and I need to find a traditional mass. I need to find a Catholic school. I need to find a neighborhood, a community. What do I do? Because people watch this podcast from all over the world. And Real Estate for Life can help you anywhere in the world. You're in Canada, Mexico, I think even in Europe. I don't know. But I know they do international and they do, of course, America. So go to realestateforlife.org and click that you heard about this from Taylor Marshall, Dr. Taylor Marshall's show podcast and they will help you. Realestateforlife.org. That's who I trust, and that's where I send people. Realestateforlife.org. Also, we are doing winter enrollment for the new St. Thomas Institute, and, man, my cameras are all off today. We're doing winter enrollment for new St. Thomas Institute. If you want to take online courses with me in philosophy, theology, Mariology, you want to study St. Augustine, the traditional Latin Mass, the Apocalypse, Old Testament, New Testament. I have detailed online courses, me speaking to you through the screen, guiding you through these things, and you can earn your certificate in philosophy, theology, Bible, apologetics. It's all there. We're doing winter enrollment now, so don't miss that opportunity. Currently, you can get all 10 courses when you sign up. All 10, not one or two, all 10. Go to nsti.com, NSTI. Dot com and sign up as a student today, and I'll be in there to welcome you and to get you started. All right, friends, thanks for watching. Remember, God made you for a special purpose. If you're still alive, he still has a purpose and a plan for you. No matter how sinful you are, or how far off track you got, he has a plan for you. So do not lose hope. Pray for guidance. And remember that our Lord Jesus Christ says that you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.